Well, not only do I own the Hobby Center and have done for 34 years, but I'm also a hobbyist and I build models, as anybody who knows me can attest to. I may not do them well, but I do do them. I needed to treat myself to a new airbrush compressor. Mine were kind of giving up, you know, they're getting loud, they're wearing down, and I wanted to treat myself to a new one. So I thought this new Digiart Model ES189 compressor with auto shut off and tank might be just the ticket. It's a value priced piece of gear and I want to try one out for myself and I want to share what I find out about it with you. So we open up the package. Nice sturdily packed. We've got our instruction manual right on the top. As I said, the unit is a tank compressor. It comes in a convenient carrying box. It's got rubber feet to keep it firmly in place where you put it. It has a, an adjustable pressure gauge, moisture trap. It has two airbrush holders on the top that you can store your airbrush on. I do notice right away that it's got a 1 8 inch compressor fitting as opposed to the quarter inch standard that you find on most brands like Pache, Iwata, and uh, Badger. That's no problem, there are adapters for that. And that's everything you see in the box. So right away I can tell you I'm going to need a 1 quarter to 1 8 adapter to fit my air hose onto this compressor. So, be that as it may, let's switch it on to see what we hear. Okay, now I have a 1 8 to 1 quarter adapter, which is necessary for this compressor. As I say, if you run Posh, Bodger, Dry Water, or many major airbrush lines that use a quarter inch adapter on their airbrush hoses. This is a Posh hose. This will connect this and we'll connect this to the compressor. So it's always good to get a little bit of Teflon plumber's tape just to wind around the threads to ensure a good seal. Now it's a very important with the auto shut off compressors that you use this tape because you want to get a very good seal. If you have any air leaks, the automatic shut off will not function. Using a wrench or an adjustable wrench, just snug the bolt. Do not over tighten. You can break it off and end up with a real mess. Just snug. So you feel it stop. There we go. And we'll do the same for the airbrush holes. Okay, we're now all hooked up. Now this airbrush has two settings. Setting number one, which is switch up. Setting number two, switch down. Number one is for airbrushing. The other one, uh, the instructions claim, is for various air tools that need a higher pressure. So we switch on. Okay, it's not silent, but that's a decent decent volume if you can hear it on the video. Now the instructions say the first time you run it, let it build up some air, then shut it off and listen for air leaks. say to watch your pressure needle. If it goes down gradually, you have good seals. 
If it goes down quickly, you have an air leak somewhere and you must attend to it. Ours hasn't budged, so I'm going to turn it back on. So as you can tell, it's certainly not a silent air compressor, but it's not a loud compressor. If you can hear me talking, compared to my old one, this is pretty quiet. Tanks fill up, it all okay. shut off. So as the instructions say, the auto shut off is set at four bars. You'll see the number four in red on your gauge. It will shut off there, or it should shut off there. This thing is primed and ready to go. We have our airbrush. And as you can see, we have a good flow of air. There is an adjuster on this. You can adjust the pressure up or pressure down by pulling up, turning it, pushing it down to lock it. And there you have your pressure set. You can play with that, get different pressures out of it. You can see it's going down as I turn it in a counterclockwise position. Find the pressure that works for you on your chest piece. And then, of course, the compressor kicks back on to bring the tank pressure up to four bars. So it will run fairly continuously if you're using it. But as soon as you stop, of course, when it comes up to four bars, it will stop. As you can see, the airbrush holder on top is a pretty handy thing. Unfortunately, this is an external airbrush. External mix, single action, so it doesn't store in an upright position. You have to put it on like this to get it to start. But anyways, it's a pretty handy feature. And there's two of them. So that's my review of the compressor. I think I'm going to be very happy with it. I hope you, uh, if you're in need of one, you check it out too. Price is very competitive. As I say, the regular price at the Hobby Center is $244.98 currently, and we have them on sale for $225. Thanks for watching the video. Please like us. Please subscribe because we hope to bring more of these to you and a lot of how-to videos and a lot of things to get you excited about the hobby that we're passionate about. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, in case you're wondering why I felt the need to get a new compressor, check out my workhorse for about the last 20 years. Isn't that fun to have blowing in your ear while you're trying to airbrush the model? Not to mention nobody in the house can sleep or do anything else. Thanks for watching.